Hey there, I'm Alex. After last week's video where I showed you how to create a sky in Unreal Engine, render it, and then take it to Comfy to enhance an upscale, a friend of mine had a comment that left me thinking, which brings me to doing this video today. He said, what'd be really cool if, is if we could just render an HDR from the engine and then upscale and enhance that, right? And got me thinking, and after a few tests, I managed to make it work. So I'm, I'm here to show you how, how you can do that, okay? So the first step is, of course, creating your, your scene with your sky. And uh, I'm, I'm going to skip that just because we did it last week. Uh, but, but as you can see, er, the only thing that's in my level is the uh, ultra dynamic sky and weather. So I've set up this very basic scene. And in my content drawer, I only have my, my level inside my Alex folder. OK, so what, what we need is something to capture the HDR for us. So if you go here into the Add tab and say Scene Capture, it's a Scene Capture Cube. That's what we're after. And what that generates is a camera, basically, right? But in this case, it doesn't it doesn't matter which where the camera is facing because it's it's going to be shooting. Uh, it's going to be shooting a cube map, so it's shooting in all directions. And once you have that camera in, you go here under under its properties and and under texture target you want to click the drop down and create a new render target a cube render target okay so click that i'm going to go in my alex folder i'm going to leave it at default name here and i'm going to hit save so if you check the content drawer now now we have that here so i'm going to double click it here and i'm going to zoom to fit right so now we have basically a cap an H a lat long capture of our scene uh, and we're previewing here. However, this is not just a snapshot. This is this is actually a live feed from the camera. So if we go here and we, we just create a cube, for instance, right? If we if we if we move this cube, you see we get real time feedback in our HDR. So like I was saying, it's not that we just took the snapshot when we created the texture. It's something that's just connected to the camera all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that cube because we don't really need it. I'm going to grab my camera and I'm going to send it to world zero. So just so that it sits at the very origin of our um, of our map here, even though it doesn't really matter. If I move it here, the sky is so far away, there's barely any change. But just so you know, uh, you can do you can use this for interiors as well. So just as an FYI. So OK, we have our camera, we have our texture set up, everything streaming correctly. Now, with our texture open, what you want to go ahead and do is change the default uh, resolution from 256 to 2048. And 2048 is the maximum resolution that the engine will allow you to have. So if you look up here, it's this is the maximum image resolution that we're going to be able to render for this lat long. It's going to be 4096 by 2048. OK, and once you have that, you can go ahead and save. There's really no more need for us to have this open anymore. So we can just close that and open your content drawer. And the next step to actually save the HDR is to right click our, uh, ta our ta target cube here and look for asset actions. And then under asset actions, go to export. So with that pop up open, we are going to call this sky HDR, HDR 01. And now change the, the file type to HDR. So now that we have our image rendered, I'm going to bring it into Nuke just to show you a couple things. And you see we have our image here. So let's go ahead and change the color space to linear. And I'm going to bring in a sphere just to show you that it maps correctly as a lat long should, right? So we have no seams anywhere, right? And it just uh, maps correctly, so you can just use it as an environment for any of your shots. Uh, but of course, this is just the, the low quality render that we got from Unreal. And the other thing to keep in mind is this is actually a 32-bit image, so it has all that nice range that you expect from it. Right? It doesn't clip or anything. So, okay, now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop and show you what to do next. I'm now in Photoshop and we're going to be saving a JPEG for us to take into Comfy. So first thing we want to go ahead and do is go to image mode and convert it from 32 bit to 8 bit. Right. And if we do that, it's going to get uh, really dark. Uh, but if we just go method and change it to exposure and gamma, right, it goes back to what it looked like. So now we have an 8 bit image, as you can see here in the preview. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit use the hotkey control shift alt S just going to allow us to save a JPEG. So I'm going to keep JPEG at maximum. 
and you see the resolution here is as we had in the engine 4096 by 2048 so i'm going to go ahead and save that okay and next we're going to go ahead and take that image into comfy and take it from there I'm now in Comfy and I have the image we just saved from uh, Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and select that JPEG and say open. And the workflow you see here is exactly the same that I shared with you last week. So the links are still very much relevant. And I have my, my timer here just for you to see how long this takes. And I'm just going to go ahead and say Q prompt. And this is going to be just upscaling to a factor of two. So it's going to be an 8K lat long at the end of this. And let's just say Q prompt and hit play here. Okay, that just finished and it came just under five minutes. Uh, however, something to keep in mind is that because this is the first generation we've done with this workflow, it takes the first time you generate an image, it's gonna take a while while it loads all the lowers and all the models and, and upscale models into memory. Um, however, if I were to generate another image right now, with, now that everything's loaded into memory, it takes substantially less. So I think around a one minute and 45 minute mark, just something close to two minutes. So it's, it's a lot, lot faster. However, five minutes, just, just so you get an idea and just something to keep in mind. So any subsequent generations are going to be much, much faster. So I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And let's go and, and compare our results here. So we have, again, our original on the right and our upscale on the left. And you see, if we if we look here in, in the sunny area, it's a, it's very very different. It's, it looks much much nicer. And again, it's something that because at this point we're dealing with a still image, you can just uh, paint any artifacts. Like maybe this bit here in the in the in the cloud looks a bit off, so you can just uh, when you take it back into Nuke, you can just paint that out. So okay, now that we have our upscale lat long, let's go back into Nuke, and I'll show you how to restore the high dynamic range into the image. Okay, so I'm back in Nuke now, and I have my three images. I have my HDR from uh, from the engine, the 32-bit one. So if we if we select it and we stop down, we have all that range. But if we look at the JPEG from Photoshop or the PNG from Comfy UI, what you'll see is that we have images that are very similar, but they don't have that range, of course, because they're 8-bit. So let's uh, reintroduce our exposure here. And if we compare, again, we have the detail there, but how do we get that range back into the image that we've upscaled. So we can do that by using the match grade node. So I'm going to go ahead and create one, select the source to our PNG and our graded source to the HDR. And one thing to keep in mind is that these images, while they look exactly the same, one is uh, two times as big because it was upscaled. So we need to bring in our reformat in order for this to work. And we're going to set it at a scale of two. So now we have two images that are lat longs 8K. So now we can go ahead and go back into our match grade node and set the source uh, for the keyframes to one. And now we hit that pl the key the keyframe plus here. And now we can analyze the reference frame. So we give it a second. And of course, depending on how big your images are, they might take longer. But now if we look at the result, what we have comparing the original here, so let me just move the viewer here so you can see what I'm looking at. Compa comparing the Comfy UI uh, output versus the match grade, you see the colors change slightly and that's okay because if we compare our HDR and our Comfy UI output, you see the Comfy UI tends to add just a few more colors, like, you know, sometimes a bit warmer, a bit more magenta. Um, so the match grade not only takes care of actually neutralizing those uh, colors that, it, that were added, but it also reintroduces that uh, the, the highlight. So if we expose down here now, looking at our match grade compared to our PNG, right? <clears throat> the non-graded PNG, you see it's it does get all that niceness and all that um, all that exposure back in the image. So now that we have that, and if we compare the both images exposed down, so the the original HDR and the Comfy UI one, we have two images that are virtually the same, except for the extra details we added, right? So now that's kind of done, right? However, one thing to keep in mind is that before I showed you, if we look at our sphere here again we didn't have any seams because this of course was built you know perfectly and it doesn't have any problems however when we upscale an image comfy ui doesn't think about the edges it just upscales and it and then when you look at the edges together what you'll see is that you'll have problems in the seams so if we connect here a sphere and actually let's bring in uh let's give this a solid alpha just so it works correctly <clears throat> 
So if you look at this now here, you see we have a seam uh, where that the upscaler just didn't take into consideration what was happening at the other end. But that's fine. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world. You have a, a couple solutions. You can, you can bring in the spherical transform. So if we can bring in spherical transform, there we go. And let's say we select that and let's say here for so now we've offset the image, right? And what you can do here is now you can either paint or you can color correct or you can do anything you want to this image just so that it, it marries a bit more nicely. And once you're done, you can just make a copy of it and then send it 500 in the other direction, right? Uh, 5,500. There we go. So now we compare this and this, exactly the same image, but moving it, it makes it easier to paint that seam. And same goes for, for all of the other coordinates, right? So if we say here 200, right? Now we have actually the top is over here, uh, but you, you get the idea, right? So it that's an option. Uh, and it's because it's a still, it's very easy to just you know paint that seam. It's not the end of the world. Um, you have another option, which is you can just key mix um, the, so let me just make a copy of this here. So if I look at this and this, right, you can just either copy, oh, not that, but that actually, so that the colors are the same. It'll take a second, of course, there we go. So you can, you can use that seam from the original and then paint that in. So that's another option. Alternatively, and something that, that actually works really well is you could also make another copy of the HDR, but this time through the spherical transform, right? So if you offset this, right, again, at, let's say 500, and then write this out and send it into Comfy UI and upscale it, you're gonna be rendering another image, but now the seam is gonna be in a different place. So it's easy enough to just have two generations and then key mix them together, right? So that's, that's another option. But now that kind of brings us to the end here. Uh, we've now created an HDR with far more detail than we had originally. And once again, for very little effort, uh, slight mapping issues, but you know, I gave you a couple solutions that are not very time intensive. It's very easy to fix. And of course, this is not, not too bad for, for something that you can generate for basically any sky or any scene. Again, like I said before, this is not strictly for skies. You can just have an indoor scene that you want an HDR for, knock yourself out and you can always take it to the upscaler and that'll introduce more details. Or if you don't want it details, it's just a way of getting that HDR through Comfy and still retaining all your dynamic range. So that kind of brings us to the end today and I hope it was helpful. It was a, it was, it was a good experiment and I'm sure I'm gonna be using it, all right? Cheers.